Look at that. Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for for coming on early as well. I really appreciate that. Well, I I was having to fool around with a few settings. Okay. So I just did my business without you seeing. <laughs> is everything yeah. is everything set up now, or, or do you want to come back later? No, and just nobody likes to be the old man who's it's silent and they're going just one sec and. The, can you hear me? <laughs> we have had we have had some like <laughs> iconic musicians who are older than us. Yes, on the show, and and that's exactly what it is. They get their wives to come over and start like, can you get can you get this? It's 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 awesome. It's hilarious. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Yeah, I have no I have no children around here right now so. to help you. <laughs> I'm Craig Northy, and welcome to the music, which is the name of the show. It is. It is. <laughs> welcome, 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 Craig. It's honestly, it's a pleasure. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I've been a huge fan for a very long time. Uh, I know we talked about Mo Berg earlier. We're gonna probably talk about Mo again. And I know I've said this to Mo when he was on the show, but I want to thank you for, to me, one of the best albums in not even Canadian history, just history with bed bugs. I mean, even, you know, really weird feeling, uh, Nestor just is awesome, but bed bugs, I could just like, I could just put that on and I'm sure I got it back here behind me in the vinyl and just like front to back over and over. And oh, over. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying so. I appreciate it. It's nice when it connects like that. Very, very much. The the funny thing was is when Greg told Mo that his favorite album was Bed Bugs. Like Mo <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. Mo, Mo Mo was that that I think that was the question that Mo didn't appreciate. Yeah. yeah. That's that's where you had to squirm and get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I was on that album. <laughs> yeah, well that's what around when I met Mo. Somewhere around there. You guys played together a bit around that time, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the next record. Okay. We did a tour, Odds of Happiness tour across uh, Canada. Nice. Well, Craig, listen, first off, congrats on the new album, Crash the Time Machine. Um, there was also, what was it, Man Machine Poem by the Tragically Hip? And I, I know Rob Baker worked on, was it the album cover? Yes, he did. Oh, yeah, yes. Rob and I have a long history of collaboration. We have a band called Strippers Union. And uh, during COVID, we also released a double album, which was ambitious. And no one really knew what happened. No, no one knows what happens to albums now, do they? They just come out and then they disappear. <laughs> So we put out wisely, we put all our chips on 29 Black, and there you go. Just nice. put out a double album. So that was our third Strippers Union album. So in, in that, on that record, Rob did all the artwork, and he, he, I don't know if people know that he's been part of the artwork on most all of the hip records. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a great painter. So I asked him to do some illustrations for this one. And he said, yes. Oh, nice. So why, the question I want to ask, you guys have been around since the late 80s, early 90s is when the, the first album uh, mm -hmm. came out. Uh, I know you guys sort of took a break um, a while ago, and you guys have come back together. What keeps, what keeps odds, you know, playing music and, you know, coming up with, with new songs as well, not just relying on, on some of the hits? Um, I don't think, I, I don't think any of us think, oh, we've already done something good. So why do mm. not do any more? You're always thinking creatively about the next thing you want to do. And that urge has never gone away. I don't think it will. Um, so we, sometimes it's a little fractured because everybody's off doing different things and stuff and it's hard to get together. We don't all live in the same town. 
Mm -hmm. And um, then when we're all together, it just happens. We, um, why we're still doing it is because we love it and we get along great. And um, I always say I, I, I get sort of giddy and excited still that when I know there's a show coming up. Nice. You now you guys have just are you guys still on the road? Because I know you played recently yeah. in Ontario. Somewhere. Yeah, it's not not the same now, it seems in uh to be on the road. You know, we don't go out mm. for six weeks at a time. We go out and do a couple things, go home, go out, do a couple things. So we did play uh yeah, we were close to you. We played at the Kitchener Blues Fest there uh, a little while ago. How was that? awesome it was great it was full of people and they were happy and it was a is in a tent so you know you're a child it's almost the circus really <laughs> nice i remember uh i remember uh what was it january 2019 at the danforth seeing you guys live again before we got into <laughs> war into these right. last three years which was an amazing show in fact it's funny because i remember Stephen Page joined you, and I joked that I was just waiting for Tom Wilson to join you on stage because it seemed like 2018, sort of the second half of 2018, and the first half of 2019 was the 12 months of Tom Wilson joining everybody on stage <laughs> during that time. <laughs> yeah, well, who doesn't want him? He's he's a, yeah. good, he's a good vibe, and we've been friends with Tom for a long time too. Um, yeah, that I think weren't the pursuit on that show too. That was pursuit. It was it was you guys yeah. in pursuit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was so fun. That was an yeah. amazing show. We uh, we did a good weird feeling our album um, at the um, horseshoe too with uh, all those friends of ours as guests, vocalists on some tunes. So it was really fun. I think during the same year, maybe a little later. Mm. So, I mean, so you've, you know, there's a lot of names, a lot of people that, you know, we've, we've just talked about in the past five minutes only, um, mm -hmm. you know, Tom Wilson, Stephen Page, uh, Mo Berg, um, you know, you, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing that everybody sort of knows each other, or if it's a Craig and Odds thing that you get your friends involved in a lot of projects, you get yourself involved in a lot of your, your friends projects um yeah. what tell tell me about this sort of theme about friends and friendship that sort of seems to go through your your career i love that question uh i don't know what it is i i've been i think i'm a serial collaborator i i love in music the social aspect of it i i sit in isolation a lot i i do and making things up but mm -hmm. i love the push and pull and an idea coming out and being able to say that's that's cool can can i add this or i like that and um different music comes out each time so amongst all the collaborations i've done i can't say to me that it sounds like the same thing it sounds like something else i mean if my voice is on it it might sound more like me uh, sometimes my voice isn't on it, but, uh, I think it's just something I like. I like that collaborative aspect of being together. Ideas go quickly. There's more ideas. Um, and there's lots of laughs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there, yeah. is there pressure to perform? Like when you get in a room with Mo and Steve and you go, shit, man, these guys have written you know, some, some of the top pop rock songs, you know, that, you know, Canadians will sing along to their songs all the time. Um, do you ever think, I don't know if, if I belong in this room or anything like that? Oh man, the imposter syndrome is heavy. I think that's mm. for, I think that's for a lot of musicians. Uh, I hope that I'm speaking for other musicians <laughs> or else I'm alone. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think that always, you always feel like the, not always, but a lot of times you feel like the weakest link or the what am i doing here but i i don't feel that kind of pressure around the people you mentioned because there's trust and i think that's what collaboration is about the best ones are where you trust the other person's opinion and you 
And of course, they come with a pedigree that says their opinion is probably pretty good. So you you trust them to to know whether your idea is not good or good. And if it's not good, you can't really get too uptight about it. You can't well, get... it, it's, it's funny. I take it from the other side, which is to me to have yourself, Mo, Stephen, and Chris. I mean, you just you have just just four iconic and i use the word pop for lack of a better word i hope you mm -hmm. give me some leeway with that but like i mean like i said to mo i said like mo to me is one of the best pop writers in in history to me it's like like when i look at like matthew sweet or stuff like just you guys the four of you matthew sweet aside the four of you just write some of the best pop music that i personally have ever heard ever so um to me it works which dovetailing off that i mean how did explosive hits volume one come mm -hmm. about for trans canada highwaymen because I, I can't wait like i just i'm i'm, uh, I'm giddy when i saw the list of songs as cover yeah. canadian covers yeah i think with what we're doing which is basically playing our own our own songs together you know um the bangers as uh the bangers call them we play those together you there's a certain well what do you you do next i mean that's fun it's super fun but it's going to repeat itself and then once you go to deep cuts why are you doing it <laughs> so uh we thought what's what's next and we started thinking about fun projects where we didn't want have to put pressure on ourselves to write a bunch of stuff but that would be unique and then I, uh, I think maybe Chris came up with the KTEL idea, and uh, <laughs> so we we um, we embraced it. And it was it was COVID, so we couldn't be together. And odds odds record was finished, and um, in sort of post production. And I think everyone else's. I think Sloan's record was done, and uh, that's the sort of thing with the band is fitting this in the holes of everybody's uh, plan A. And um, so we started talking about what the songs would be and what everybody's favorite things were and what the, we had to have some rules. It was between like 1968 and 73 kind of thing. And, mm. and just kind of, um, you know, that we gave a little bit of leeway. I think there's a couple outliers, but we, um, we just, started sending each other guide tracks and then i aggregated the tracks here and we had a document about who's done what and said uh, we're missing this what about you play the flute steven you know all this kind of stuff and we collect all the stuff here and then put it all together and that's what it is it sounds it sounds pretty cool that's awesome i can't wait to hear it i can't wait to hear it. thanks is there a favorite yeah. song from that upcoming album of yours that you like there's a sentimental favorite for me, which is uh, Bim's Can't Catch Me, which probably wasn't as huge a hit as some of the other songs in Canada, but it still was a big single. And when I was a kid, it was on the radio here in Vancouver, probably more, because he was a West, a BC guy. And he later changed to his actual name, which is Roy Forbes, and has had a, a long career as a Canadian musician of note and writer and um when when i when i listen to that song it's that moment beside my am radio that's beside my bed as i'm going to bed and mm. he's on there with the beatles he's on there because i'm old and a lot of people <laughs> like that i couldn't differentiate when i was a kid the difference between him and the beatles uh, like who they're all on the radio yeah. so um, eventually he was uh another dad at my kids elementary school <laughs> and uh that blew my mind and we became friends so that that wow. song that song's a, an important uh contribution for me i love playing it that's amazing. i'm gonna have to, i'm gonna have to go back and listen i, I just uh, off the top of my head i can't think of it yeah and again like but but again i was an east coast like, toronto kid so it's like i know when i talk to my wife who grew up in vancouver like we talk about again we grew up in the same time frame as you're talking about you know listening to to radio as kids 
And there's songs she knows from the West Coast by Canadian artists that yeah. mm, I sort of know on the periphery and vice versa. There's songs that I know from out here that she's like, yeah, I sort of remember that as a kid. I don't know. All right. Yeah, I know. And it's it, organically in music, there was a lot more regionalism yeah. in, in the past. And, you know, I still have to have arm wrestles over Vancouver punk scene versus Toronto, all that kind of stuff. So yep. just like an important arm wrestle. And, uh, you know, I have to, I have to practice my arm wrestling. <laughs> but the punk scene here was really awesome. Before before we started recording, I don't know if you were joking, but you know, you said, "Oh, I don't want to play that song again." Um, do you have Craig? A, a are there songs, odd songs that you oh, we got to play this again, or do you enjoy playing no. all of your hits? Oh my gosh, yes, I do, and I'm I don't have that feeling of I've never had that feeling. I thank those songs for all mm. they did every time I do it and I I don't think I've ever yeah there's a couple times I may have sleepwalked through them like when you're driving to the mm. convenience store and you scare the shit out of yourself because you realize you're there and you don't remember driving there but um I not often usually I'm just enjoying every note I think I think when we took a hiatus with the band it made every note more valuable when we returned to doing this mm. and uh it made everything more valuable because sometimes mm. you go, eh, I'm really lucky to do this. That's true. So I, so when I was saying that it was in reference to the highwaymen, like um, uh, when, when you look down at the uh, set list and you see that I'm an adult now is coming up and, yeah. and underwhelmed and Brian Wilson, and then there's your song sitting there. You go, <laughs> let's get, no, let's just skip it. Skip it. Let's, <laughs> way more fun to, to play road hockey and say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Jonathan Taves, you know, yeah, it's way more fun to do that. I hear you. Um, Greg, are you hearing like a, a beeping or is that yeah. just on my, yeah, I thought it was inside my head. Yeah, that's uh, good. I was, I was hearing it too. I think it's an alert from my phone. Is it for, no worries. That's all right. Yeah, but my phone isn't on. So it's coming through my computer. Zoom, so zoom catastrophes. Happened, Everybody out there, when it happens, your eggs are done. <laughs> Speaking of Zoom, yes, you yeah. had a story that you shared with us before that I would love for you to share if you don't mind. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> it was Stephen Page, great little Stephen Page, has a live from home show that he does uh, in in uh, from his hometown it's no longer in his home it's in his in his studio but um he invented it during covid when we all didn't know what the hell to do and and he built up a big community and he's on sh coming up he's doing show 110. Wow. so he he's really stuck with it and it's kind of a unique thing so i encourage anyone to tune in and check it out but early on in the first few shows the whole idea of the zoom platform for something like that was pretty new. And he, um, he he was singing a song and he wanted everyone to sing along with him. So he said, hey, everybody, unmute. There was about 800 people on the show and they all unmuted at the same time. And the sound was, it was like a wolf pack being hit by a semi truck being hit by an asteroid. It was so freaking amazing. And he just held up his arms and the whole world was feeding back. And then somebody managed to hit the button to turn everybody off. And, uh, <laughs> he, still re re he still refers to it as the great unmuting. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing. A, oh my God, that's hilarious. Craig, is that, is that a guitar behind you? <laughs> what? Seriously? Why would I have a guitar? <laughs> As a, I don't know, some musicians yeah. look wait look at it hey and what is what is that <laughs> this little old 1963 barney castle i don't know uh, does it sound like a guitar yeah it does. <laughs> you it's out of tune you want to play something want, did you want me to play something yeah let's yeah that let's play awesome. a little a little something something 
Okay. Um, how about I sing something from Crash the Time Machine? Sounds That's great. Awesome. Okay. Should I tell a little story about it? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. He's, okay. he, see, normally Kareem asks these questions, but he's like totally dropping the ball right now <laughs> as, as, as the host. But go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I, I was just, you know, that little dinging that we've been hearing about the eggs and stuff. That's just Kareem sending me telepathic messages and it's just overloading the Zoom. <laughs> so, um, so surprising that you asked about this guitar. Let's see. Can you hear the guitar now? Yeah. Okay. So I'll talk about, you ask me a question about the song. So Craig, what song are you going to play? I hadn't thought about it. <laughs> um, I'm going to play, I think it's the last song on the record because that's how I party. Um, it's called Somehow in a Dream. And uh, over the course of writing this record, we lost a few important people in our lives. And, and as you alluded, we have a lot of friends and collaborators. And Gord Downey was one. So you can, when you listen to the record, you can hear a song that might be attributed to the things that our friends went through in that regard. And another person we lost was John Mann. And John was in Spirit of the West. And uh, John and I met when we were about 18 or 19 in the music scene here and, and been friends our whole lives. So that was huge. You know, Doug Elliott from the Odds played on John's solo stuff and um, our families are really tight. Our children are all, you know, a whole generation of friends. And you talked about friends earlier. So mm -hmm. I will say something that we discovered in the last few years is how important that is. Um, musicians don't have a lot of support systems. There's a lot of new charities and things that are starting to deal with um, when you run into trouble because oftentimes you don't make a lot of money and you don't have the resources to handle catastrophes in your life. But you realize the people you met along the way, the people you collaborate with, your friends are that support system. Yeah. And uh, so we'll send this out to Johnny. It's called Somehow in a Dream. Love goes to buildings on fire And it flies to you You sleep as the smoke curls around you and soldiers salute you're the front man we all need your heart is true we shrink the spaceship and climb in cause we are your crew we can reach you, we can reach you Somehow in a dream You're watching TV snow We're sending in a team Down the river of imagination Fueled by the beer Through the white wall Follow the music and Tune out the fear Rest of us are On the outside but Never lost within Set a course for the heart of hearts and let the games begin we can reach you we can reach you somehow in a dream you're watching tv snow we're sending in a team 
So tell the nightmare clouds to part And beam us down, beam us down When we land somewhere on the sand We'll swim out and look at the clouds Make me laugh at the saddest part Get me in trouble too Red lipstick and she smiles at you Throws her arms around you Throws her arms around you The rest of us are at the party Blowing up balloons Behind the white wall Hear the band play the whole of the moon The whole of the moon We can reach you We can reach you Somehow in a dream You're watching TV snow We're sending in a team Somehow in a dream Somehow in a dream Yeah Come on! Jeez! Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Fantastic! It's a tough one. That's hard. That's hard to listen to. I can't even imagine. Thank you for sharing. Oh. That. Yeah, it's getting more possible. I, I had a harder time yeah. doing it before, but you know, time wounds all heals, as Nick Lowe would say. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a great song. Just a fantastic yeah. song. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, it was it was great to record because because of COVID and stuff, and you can sort of mail it around. Um, Kendall Carson played fiddle on it, who had a long history playing with those guys. And, um, and um, Matt Kelly as well played, he plays with City and Collar and Alexis on Fire and, and um, also as a friend of the family. And um, Jeffrey Kelly from Spirit of the West, John's uh, comrade in arms all those years sang with mm. me. Wow. wow so it's so like a duet yeah well he he played he sang backing vocals he's a little yeah. he, he has some gravitas to his voice so if you listen hard you can hear him wow <laughs> oh lovely a lovely tribute lovely yeah for yeah. sure um as you can tell we're not professional so i don't know how to make this switch into any other <laughs> questions oh, i love so, that i'm not either <laughs> <laughs> um we have a segment, Craig, called Lost Venues. We like to uh, discover places that no longer exist, but hear stories from, you know, venues that either have a funny story, a sad story, uh, a horror story. So I'm curious, Craig, if if you have a, a such a venue in mind. Well, yeah. Well, back in the vaudeville days, <laughs> uh, um, yes. It was Slappy's Beef Bar. <laughs> um, no, it was a. I I was just sort of flashing to the very first odd show, which would have been at, at the Savoy in Vancouver, which was a great upstairs bar, a meeting place where I would go to hang out with John Mann or any any of those people. It was the place that place and a place called the Town Pump were and the Railway Club. Those three, that triumvirate of clubs, um, were the places where. I, I don't know what to do tonight. I'm just going to go there and find a friend, you know, you know, you'll walk in and somebody, mm. you know, is there. And, uh, the Savoy, we was our first gig, November 25th, 1987. And, uh, Paul Brennan, an original drummer in, in odds had, uh, had his drums a couple weeks earlier burned in a fire at another gig, a hall burnt down and and that he was playing and lost his drums and none of us had a pot to piss in so 
Um, our friend Pat Stewart, who later joined Odds, well, has been in Odds now for, I don't know, 26 years, but he, uh, he, he loaned um, Pat these beautiful Ludwig drums, vintage Ludwigs with a giant kick drum, all sparkle, silver. Uh, and so we had these cool drums for our first show. And there was kind of a buzz that night. I mean, people kind of knew we were all the weird person from every band in Vancouver that were finally together. And, um, and there was going to be some kind of energy that night. And uh, so it was packed and it was really exciting. I remember it being a good, a great gig. And when I get excited, I get excited. So I stood, I stood on the drum kit and it was on a riser too. And I stood on the kick drum and Pat was in the audience. They were his drums. I stood and I was staring at Paul on the kit and I thought, I'm going to make this chai pig level leap right now. I'm just going to go for it. And if I break both my legs, whatever. So I push down to get a launch point and I feel the whole kick drum collapse like an orb underneath me, like, like go, go into an ellipse. <laughs> and then I launched myself off it. I got a lot of air and came down on the stage, but I, I, I realized I turn around and I look and Pat's just like this. I, for you, those of you just listening, it's that <laughs> face from Edvard Munch, Munch's uh, silent scream. <laughs> you know, he he was just like he just shat himself because <laughs> they were you know lovely old vintage drums. And I went, oh my god! Uh, and I had that. I hope I didn't break them. Anyway, the drums survived, and Pat's been playing. Pat had two different tenures in Brian Adams' band, and so. Those drums, those very drums are out with Brian Adams right now playing <laughs> arenas. They're look fine. At, they're they're fine. fine. Yeah. Wow. Well, look at that. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, it, I, as, you, as you tell the story, I'm like, oh, my God, I can see where this is going. So that's, that's uh, wow. Yeah, you, um, you knew yeah, I was going to do something bad to those drums when I described so them so nicely. See, I'm not professional either. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, one of the questions we'd love to ask our guests before we wrap things up is, um, what are you listening to lately? What's in your earbuds, earpods, headphones, whatever, that people should be checking out? New World. Well, I'll just go what I was listening to yesterday. Uh, Jonathan Stout. He's a swing guitar player. I, I heard about him on a, a podcast such as this. And then I just went down listening to his stuff and I thought he's amazing, but that's, I think how it is now it's mm -hmm. fractured. And I, I'm listening to all kinds of things all the time. Um, so I'm a little stymied to come up with a big list. No, I appreciate that. No, no, no. Just like, like just yeah. even one thing that our, our listeners can check out and explore and learn. So it seems, it. it seems a little indulgent, but I, I rediscovered an album that I worked on um, recently by Wendy Bird, which would be really obscure. So if you look up Wendy Bird, Natural Wonder, it's a whole bunch of people playing in a room, like 15 people at once. It was cut live like that. And it's uh, all the songs were Jeffrey Hatcher songs. He was in the big beat and in the blue shadows and, uh, and Wendy sang them beautifully. And I just realized how much I loved it. Mm. You know, sometimes you're actually on something you love. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's Neil Young playing the V, isn't it? He's playing something. Oh, yeah. I think he's playing the V. Yeah. He hated that guitar, but I love it. <laughs> I'm actually surprised Green didn't bring up Neil Young during this podcast. I, well, I was going to ask, like, play a Neil Young song. I can, I, tell you a good, I can tell you a really good Neil Young story. We're still recording, sure. Craig, so let's go. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to reveal about it. I, I, went to see, I went to see Neil when he did the Shocking Pinks and Trans together. You know, like he started off doing trans. I've seen him in, a few times, but that was this, this where the story came from. And I was on an, in an altered state. And okay. um, Neil played the the trance thing was amazing. He, he did that. He did a lot of the hits with people in the darkness around him, 
the classic players that you you would think of and then he ended with the shocking pinks like a full white suited thing big rockabilly band it was fantastic <clears throat> and during the the um show he had an announcer backstage who was interviewing people and in the intermission he said he'd do it like a sportscaster how's it going neil how do you feel and neil would say you know i i think i ate too close to the show so it was a little bit logy but it's picking up now and uh anyway it was a really good-hearted and well executed show and I was enjoying it on so many levels in an interdimensional way. And my friend, we had got scalp tickets and he was up in another section and I was on the floor and I went to meet him afterwards. And I, he said, I said, how was it where you were? And he says, great. I was sitting with Neil's family. Oh. He said, wow, that's cool because he has family in Vancouver. And, uh, and I said, what's that on your leg? We were young. And, and I, he said, I don't know. They gave it to me and stuck it on my leg. I said, I think that's a backstage pass. And so he said, really? Well, let's go backstage then. So we went down into the tunnels in the Pacific Coliseum and uh, met this really old crusty security guy. Just one person there. There was no one else there. And uh, he, uh, he said, well, you need two of those. And uh, I said, well, we had two of those, but, you know, mine fell off. I'm feeling terrible. And the guy let us in. So the two of us went backstage and there was nobody there in the dressing rooms. One said Neil Young, one said the Shocking Pinks, and there was a big garbage can in the middle and of, the, of this, this landing. And we opened up the garbage can and inside was ice and beer. So we Ooh. just started having some beer and all of a sudden – the band starts coming out of the dressing rooms and we're holding the beer and we've got the thing open and uh i'm standing there with my program you know and because uh, they used to sell programs uh and um neil comes out and all his family are there and i end up standing in this circle with neil and his family right beside neil and they're talking about what they're going to do tonight and how's everybody doing and stuff and he looks at me and and i of course look kind of crazed and i asked him if he could sign my program and he did and i just had this feeling that i could talk to this guy and he looked so strange to see in person i'd never seen a famous person like that mm -hmm. right beside me someone i i had on my poster on my wall that i was you know i'd never seen them standing right beside me and i said you know neil your head is much bigger in person than it is in pictures. <laughs> and he paused for a second and he went, <laughs> and he just started laughing and he's slapping me on the back and going, Oh my God, we're going to, and he looks at me and he goes, we're going to go to Fresco's, which is this all night um, restaurant in that it's now gone. Speaking of venues that are now gone in Vancouver on Robson Street. And he goes, we're going to go to Fresco's. You want to go to Fresco's? And I go, yeah. And he says, okay, see you there. I didn't go. Oh, I didn't go. I figured that was it. And that was my moment. So I capped the story off there. But what a lovely guy. He just he just died, though. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Your head looks uh, That's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. The, I'm, I'm glad you told that story because there's a – there's that saying, right? You never want to meet your heroes because they just might disappoint you. And you sort of. Oh, no. Steve put, Steve, me, put me at ease. Stephen Page has met him a bunch of times and hung out with him and says the same things. Just wonderful guy. That so. is awesome. That is so awesome to hear. Thank Craig, you. thank you so much for joining us uh, today. We really appreciate yeah. it. It's been um, an honor, Craig. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Nice yeah. to meet you guys. No Hopefully problem. I'll you again yeah absolutely well look, hopefully we see you live uh yes. at, at, a, at a at a show uh whether it's here in toronto or, or somewhere else but um mm -hmm. before you go just to let people know uh go and get the latest album uh by uh odds you can get that at oddsmusic.com crash the time yep. machine on vinyl cd digital yep. download cassette is there a cassette no cassettes. No. That, saving that for Trans Canada Highwaymen. 
Oh, interesting. And when is when eight is track, eight track for Transformers? Eight... <laughs> oh, we're already sold out. It's dude. sold out. Oh, it's sold out. Perfect. Uh, oddsmusic.com. Our guest has been Craig Northey from Odds. Thank you again for joining us. This has been a pleasure, a blast. Thanks for having me.